My name is Dr Beth Clarkson. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Portsmouth. My research is interested in gender equality um, and coaching, specifically um, in the football workplace. I recently conducted a study with some colleagues um, here at the University and also at the University of Winchester, which examined some of the barriers that women coaches in football um, experience as a result of their gender. Football as a culture um, is significantly um, male dominated and women have a turbulent history uh, with football, um, most uh, prominently known for their exclusion between 1921 and 1971 uh, when the FA banned women from participating in organised football due to their unsuitability um, to participate in the game. So because of this, men's football advanced quite significantly in a way that women's football was held back because of the ban. As a result, the way that men's football and women's football is viewed in the UK um, has previously been that women's football is seen as substandard to the men's game. And coaching gets pulled into this. Uh, women coaches can sometimes be viewed as um, not of the, the same quality or standard or have the same ability to coach at all levels of the game. But largely, the research that's been conducted on uh, women in sport leadership hasn't taken a sport specific approach and has looked instead at women coaches experiences across different sports. But because of the cultural significance of the and the turbulent relationship that women have had with football, um, our study sought to examine some of these barriers in um, the cultural context of, of football and the football workplace. So what we did was interview uh, women coaches at all levels of the football pyramid. We interviewed uh, women uh, operating at grassroots, at academy and at elite levels of uh, football. And we found that there were challenges associated with the roles that they had at each of those levels, but there were also consistent themes throughout. We found that in every level of football, women talked about football culture being male dominated and they said they routinely experienced sexism. For instance, all women coaching at a youth recreational level reported that they were given fewer resources, such as kit or access to pitches, if they coached a team of girls. Coaches also had to fight to use new equipment if then the male players were given. One woman in our study uh, was told outright by a professional club that it didn't hire women. An elite level coach we interviewed said that she experienced a lot of sexism in football, adding that men felt insecure around her and would try to assert their dominance with sexist banter at training or at dugouts during matches. We found that all women we spoke to had experienced gender stereotyping. One head coach for a, a men's team recalled arriving at a pre-game talk to give her first uh, uh, talk to uh, be asked by her male players whether she was there to clean their boots or being told she should wash their kits. And it made her wonder whether she was good enough to be a, a head coach. We also found that women coaching at every level need, had to accept that they needed to fight harder for everything. If they were appointed, it would probably be to less desirable positions, such as coaching younger age groups. Many felt their career progression was limited as a result, and it placed extra pressure on them to develop players into elite performers in a way that their male counterparts didn't have to uh, be under. We found that women face similar barriers across all levels of football, but there were also challenges unique to grassroots, academy and elite coaching. For instance, grassroots uh, coaches reported being isolated, such as being the only female coach at their club, and were lacking in confidence. But women coaches at adult elite levels of football felt that the culture was improving. While they were seen as the token woman, um, these women felt that there was greater acceptance from their male colleagues. However, they didn't want to be known as a woman coach and they were worried about movements that solely focused on increasing the number of women coaches and that might put pressure on teams to hire women rather than employing the best woman or man suited for the role. And this differed really from coaches at a grassroots and academy level who wanted more support for women, such as opportunities to meet other coaches, uh, to have a mentor, to attend women-only education courses. 
but the elite level coaches said that they didn't want to attend these courses for fear of being an outsider or being unable to achieve the same standard as men or perhaps needing extra help to achieve the same goals as their male colleagues. Now, research has shown that male dominated coaching courses can be intimidating and uncomfortable for women, uh, which is why these women only courses are now held right across the country. But despite some of these potential benefits of the course, uh, the elite level coaches in our study reported that these courses are sometimes viewed as substandard when compared to, say, a mixed gender equivalent. And as a result, many of them didn't want to attend. But progress is continuing to be made and the FA have launched a number of initiatives to boost the number of women coaches at regional and national levels. And our study suggests that support needs to be different for women depending on their current career stage and on the type of role that they hold, whether that's at grassroots, academy or an elite level. Now, knowing this can help continue to promote progress for women coaches. And we hope to continue advocating for women coaches through our research and consultancy work here at the University of Portsmouth.